Hey there, paper geeks and glitter nerds. It's and I'm back with a birthday card. This one is um, your pirates. Um, I'm going to be making the front with lawn fawn and the inside with MFTs. Uh, pirate stamp. The outside is going to be quite easy um, and the inside is going to be a pop up. So uh, I'm just going to take the map pieces off of the lawn fawn stamp and make a uh, model background, so to say. Uh, I'm gonna heat emboss everything. Um, the black pieces will be in Versifying, like you see, and the red part will be in Lawn Fawn Chili Pepper. And the embossing will help me when I distress this piece with uh, an assortment of uh, distress inks. But there's not much else to say about it, um, so I'm just gonna leave you with the uh, process for now. And this concludes the front of the card. I think it turned out very nice. Um, and as far as I know, the recipient liked it. So now I'm gonna move on to the MFT stamp uh, with the pirates. I'm gonna make uh, a little hill for them to stand on, which is gonna pop up inside the card. And this will include some masking, which you'll see me stamp out here. And I have removed the uh, actual cutting of the masks. You didn't really need to see me fussy cut all that. 
and uh, I'm thinking I should actually leave you until we start on the coloring because that's the interesting part. Okay, maybe not quite to the coloring, since this is going to be popping up, um, I'm going to have to cut it out by hand, uh, the bank in the background, and then all around all the, the little pirates, but it's all going to be worth it. Um, this card was made for my youngest brother, he turned 9, now this video is a few years old. Um, I had it lying around. I actually really loved the card. Um, it was supposed to go along with the pirate theme of his birthday that year. So, and it was loads of fun. He and his cousins enjoyed themselves. I am the uh, the oldest of all the children. So, um, yeah. Not much else to say. This was tedious and today I can't really do these kind of things that easily. I will avoid them if I can, but this really, really was worth it, I think. Maybe not with the back pain I would get today from doing it, but it really looks good. And even the tiny pieces in between the little uh, pirates I cut out. That's the problem with being a bit of a perfectionist, I guess. <laughs> yeah. We should be getting close to the coloring now. Uh, there's no reason to uh, to use alcohol markers to color the sand. I'm just going to use the stress inks. And then it will match the the color scheme on the front of the the card, which is nice.
and now we're getting started on the coloring. Now the pole is just going to be plain boring brown. I didn't see any need in shading it. And I always, for your sake, keep a log of all the colors I use. It's of course also uh, very useful for me when I uh, make something else and I can go back and see what colors I used for other projects. Uh, with these markers there is the problem of um, there not being as many teachers out there as there is for Copics. You're uh, a bit on your own, unfortunately. Um, and the color coding on these, I haven't really figured it out yet, except for the letters. They make sense, but the numbers don't always. Um, but these were luckily some colors that I knew already. That were good. Um, I did keep the colors very simple. I didn't see any need to, uh, to use the entire rainbow, especially not for a boy card. This is a cheat sheet I made. Um, I don't use it much anymore since I have actually got more colors now than I did when I made that one. But it is helpful. Um, I'm planning on trying to make a hex chart for these, um, but I'm still debating how to go about it. Um, I am gonna cut out hexagons and color them and write them numbers on the back so I can figure them out but it may also be fin beneficial to get it my hands on a Copic hex chart and see which colors kind of uh, have the same hue and maybe use that one to uh, to help me make mine but I don't actually know anyone who has the full Copic collection and a cheat sheet I could borrow <laughs> so still working on that one
if you're wondering why I used browns, reds and yellows for the uh, pirates, um, it would have been less noticeable if I had used blues and greens since the background is going to be the ocean and sky, which you'll see me make in a minute. Um, just if you're wondering, that was the reasoning why I, I picked the colors I did. Now I'm just going to color in the sand on the card. This is also where a friend of mine will be writing the message because she has the most phenomenal handwriting. Um, you're going to see that in the photos. Uh, I didn't get that on camera. But uh, I, I'm not jealous at all. Just saying. Um, kidding. I am. She has amazing handwriting. And she doesn't see it herself of course And this here is the background that I talked about. <laughs> I can really be nitpicky about straight lines. Um, it's a curse sometimes. Especially if I do make something crooked. Oh, this is my homemade cloud stencil. Um, I'm going to be making a new one with my scan and cut uh, pretty soon, hopefully. But it does work great. I just want more variety and there are a few issues with the way I cut it. A few, uh, not jagged edges, but more... Uh, jagged than I would like. Now we just need the ship and then we are ready to sail off. Now this is a good trick actually. I have an old uh, mouse pad which I put underneath when I hand stamp something. Uh, it really helps to get a good impression when you don't want to bring out your uh, stamping tool. And this one was just I needed it to go quickly. Some some grays for the sail. And well, brown for the the wooden ship of course. I think I make the flags red just to put in a pop of color. Yeah, here we go. The details on the ship is not are not that important since uh, it'll be in the background. The shading on the uh, pirates was more important. 
and again meticulous with cutting out everything in the background even the tiny pieces in between the sails And I'm just going to hide the core of the paper with some black marker. It's a wonderful <laughs> trick. Just have to be careful. And I'm going to set the ship into the sea first. Has to look real, you know? Even if this is just a card. And now it's time to uh, put all these pieces together. First the background. I'm gonna have to trim that a bit. It is sticking out. And then I have to put in the pop-up piece. And as you've probably guessed, this piece won't pop up the way I cut it. I have to put in additional supports. But that was all on purpose. I'm just measuring, making sure that it's constructed right. But I'm gonna put it in wrong. Sometimes you just think too much. In hindsight I should have colored these blue. Or sand colored. But this is how I attach uh, the support pieces on the back. Making sure everything is falling flat. And trimming off the excess. Like I said before. see what I told you I did it wrong <laughs> oops <laughs> now I'm making sure that this goes in right and of course I forgot to hide the core of the paper before I glued it in. You have to forget something, right? But luckily I didn't mess this part up. Now all I need is a sentiment for the front. I know this has been a 
very long but very silent video but I do hope you enjoyed it anyway and here you see this beautiful handwriting I was talking about I hope you'll be having a good day evening or night till we meet again